Welcome back to Bows and Balls. I'm Brent. I hope everybody had a good Christmas. I was going to try to get a video out on Christmas, but things just didn't happen that way. So, but we're here now. And uh, again, I hope everybody had a good Christmas. Uh, for this video, we're going to discuss uh, what I did when I first got snakes. When I once I had them out. Well, I already did a video on how to get them out with the best with the best uh, chances of not getting bit. Um, I think it was uh, how to take your new snake out without getting bit. I think that was the name of the video. But this time we're just gonna discuss, I'm gonna show what I did when, what, once I had my snakes out. All right, let's go. We'll get some yellings out. I don't have any of that ball up. Most of the time, when you first take your snakes out, they're gonna they're gonna ball up. And the best thing to do is to just go and uh, just sit still for a second when they're all balled up. See this girl? She's getting ready to go in the shed. So I grab her right here. You know, behind. This is Twitch. She is a clown, 66% petrified. Now, what I do, granted, yours is probably going to be balled up, like I said. Now, and if it is balled up, best thing to do is just to hold it, just like this, and wait, and and just hold still. And normally, they'll come out in about, I don't know, 10 to 20 seconds, you'll start seeing them move around, and the next thing you know the head will start peeking out and, and then they'll be just sitting there and honestly what i did is i sat down with them and i sat down with them and i held them pretty much just like this you know let them kind of do their own thing you know i didn't force them to uh move around or anything like that because you could just they'll just stay balled up a lot of times if you do that but I just sit here like this and waited for them to come out. And then once they was out, then I'd start moving around a little bit. But I wouldn't be up walking around with them because in the very beginning, you're going to give them way too much stuff, you know, going on. You know, to the point where they almost seem like you're making them dizzy because they're just, there's just too much stuff for them to focus on and to worry about so the best thing to do is normally just sit down with them you know and just hang out with them i like to do this you know some people like to call it desensitizing and i just call it i i don't like desensitize it just it's just un, so unpersonal to me no i like to just get them used to my touch you know and let them see that this that this isn't going to hurt them you know the touch isn't going to hurt them i wouldn't go and try to rub them on the head and stuff in the beginning i wouldn't even try to touch them around their face in the beginning you know that comes later you know when when you can get them out and they're not balled up and and all that let's see how pink she is this is twitch Twitch is not for sale. Twitch is going to stay here with us. But, yeah, so in the beginning, like I said, I would just take them out. And if they're balled up, I would just hold still for a little bit, you know, until they come out. And then once they come out, just move really slow. Try not to have, you know, have anything over their head or anything, you know, because... In the very beginning, you put anything over their head, and it's gonna it's it's gonna scare them, and you take a chance of putting them in defensive mode, you know. So it's best just to kind of let them do like I'm doing with her, and just let them. Don't have you know digits up. You want to keep your you know fingers and your hands in close. You know I can do it now, but you know I wouldn't like readily give them something to to you know latch on to with their mouth i normally you know try to hold my hand nice and flat and all that in the very beginning just 
don't give them something that they can, you know, give you a defensive bite on. I definitely wouldn't have them up around your face. I would have them, you know, about this far away from your face in the very beginning until you get, until you get that trust, you know, until you get to, to know your snakes. But then they'll start moving around like this, you know. And like I said, I like to give them pats. And I do it, I open their tubs up and I give them pats all the time, even if I'm not taking them out. And it's not tap training. I'm just getting them used to my touch. It's the same thing with my boas. And these same techniques seem to work on the boas as well. You know, I would just sit down and relax. And, and that's it too. You've got to be relaxed. If, if your heart's racing, they're going to feel it through your hands and your fingers and, and, and all that. And your heartbeat could just put them off. You know, they'll feel that, that you know, an, your heart, you know, anxious, beating away, anxiously beating away. And they'll pick up on it. And some could pick up on it as, you know, that something's wrong, you know, and all that. So... You want to be nice and relaxed. And I know it's hard in the beginning, but stay as relaxed as you possibly can anyway. And, uh, but, but like this girl, if once they're like this, you, you can do whatever you want. I mean, my wife does dishes with them around her neck. She folds laundry with snakes around her neck. I go out and I wipe my bikes down. I go out and check all my bikes. I take my snakes outside with me a lot. You know, I mean a lot. I set them down on the seat of my motorcycle and, and clean. And for the most part, my ball pythons just sit there and they move around a little bit, but they don't really ever try to get away. You know, and honestly, I wouldn't do that with a snake that I was worried about. You know, a snake that's kind of shy or or could tend to be defensive no i wouldn't do that because that's you know you're going to put them off by having them out in the wide open like that you want to get them used to being out and all that before you do do any of that but for the most part once you get them used to you and you're used to them and you've got that trust thing you know you you just know that they're fine and that they're not stressed you know like she's this is not stress at all. This is great. She got good tongue flickers, just moving around nice and slow and you know. But and obviously I wouldn't take and do too much with her because she is in shed. You know, some of them it don't matter, but her, you know, still being young, you know, a little over a year old, so I wouldn't you know, I don't really want to uh wouldn't want them out too, you know, too much. But I'd have no problem sitting down with her, watching a movie, you know, just hanging out, you know, and doing kind of that, not up, you know, like running around and stuff. But, but I know I see, you know, a lot of videos. I've done videos before and I've never done a video on, uh, you know, what to actually do once you, once you have your snake out. Let's see, we'll take Ziggy Pop out. Let's see him there, his head's right there. Okay, I reach in the back and I pick him up. I wish I had snakes that would ball up. I don't have any snakes that would that act like when I first get them. <laughs> and nor should I have snakes that act like that as long as I've had all these guys. But this is Ziggy Pop. He's a male. And uh, he is a clown. 66% hepapide. But see, like snake like this, it's nice, and he's already moving around and all that, and he's perfectly, you know, happy going hand to hand and and all this. Now this guy would be a guy that I could go make a coffee, you know. Uh, I could go outside, you know, go to the mailbox, grab the mail, you know, go out check on the dog or whatever. I mean, he he is giving me the vibe that you know. Everything's cool. I'm, I'm, 
I feel safe with you, you know, I feel safe with him. It's Iggy Pop is not for sale. <laughs> I will get to the ones that are on off market. Heather. Heather asked about, she asked if I had any snakes for sale. And granted, I can't ship now until spring. But come spring, I'll, I do have snakes for sale. Like I said, that's not why I shoot these videos. So I'm not like, you're not going to. Unless somebody asks me about snakes that I have for sale, I'm not really going to. I might say that this one's for sale, but I'm not going to try to sell the snakes here. That's not why I do this. I'm doing this, this kind of thing just to try to help the new people. You know, new people that are getting into it. Like I said, this isn't a breeder channel and all that. If somebody wants to know how to breed, yes, I will. I don't have a problem, you know, helping somebody out with that information. But this isn't going to, this channel is not a breeding channel. It's not about this morph or that morph. It's just, I want people to get over the whole thing of snakes are horrible and they're mean and vicious. I'm gonna fix my camera. It's crooked. It's kicking. My AD, whatever you want to call it, it's kicking in. All right, all right. Now I will go. All right. This is a fire. This guy is for sale. He's a male, and he's a sweet snake. See him right there. I just reach in right here. Reach right in right here. See? And that's not balled up. Balled up is the head strap is bald. They'd be bald right around. A balled up snake is when the head is inside the ball. Literally balled up, hiding the head, protecting the head. And look at this guy. He's such a good boy. We do not have a name for him. And he's got a nice little Nice little cool. Looks like almost a Christmas tree on his head. Probably can't see it. But it does. It looks like a looks like a Christmas tree. This is a cross between a firefly and a pinstripe. And this is what I got. And he is a super good boy. He's a great eater. All my snakes are great eaters. We're great eaters right from right out of the egg. Took to frozen thawed first meals. Uh, rats. I don't start on mice. I mean, you know, I've got snakes that that were on mouse, and I had a heck of a time to get them to swap over to rats. And I'm not one that, I'm not big on mice. Mice are fine for boas and stuff in the beginning for babies, you know, and as they're growing up. But I hate mouse for ball pythons. To me, they're just, and this is my opinion, you know, to me, mouse is like burgers and fries. There's very little nutrition for ball pythons when it comes to mouse. I prefer them on rats, you know. This guy is just under a year old now. I don't power feed here. I'm not worried about, you know, getting them big quick. Because people, if you're overfeeding your snakes, you're going to lose out on the end. On, on the end. If you power feed and you, you feed too often and too big, now... Their, their lifespan is going to be drastically shortened. You know, you cannot power feed or, or, or try to get these guys big fast. Breeders do it all the time because they're, they're trying to get into, you know, they want to get them as big as they can, as fast as they can, so they can start putting them in the rotation for the breeding. And I don't do that. I could, I'm not a breeder. Yes, I'm going to breed here and there, but I'm not what I consider a breeder. These are my pets. And I want these guys as long as I possibly can. So I do not power feed. 
I, I feed the same size to slightly larger every two weeks once they hit weaned rat size. And as you can see, all my snakes look perfectly healthy and all that, and they are because they don't get power fed. Now, everybody, oh, look how big my snake's gotten and, and how fast it's grown. All that tells me is that, you, that not always, because I do have some big snakes that got big quick, all on their own, feeding the way I normally feed. It wasn't that, oh, I power fed those ones or I gave those ones bigger food or anything like that. They just grew faster. But I do not want to power feed any of my snakes. I don't want to get, I'm not worried about getting them big quick. Big quick means you're just going to shorten their life on the other on the other end of it now I want my snakes as long as I can have have them here and if they're gonna be around for 30 35 years well then I just assume have them for that long but this is what I would do once I have my snakes out as you can see for the ones that have been focusing on this little guy and not so much my talking which is fine you know we're good with that here you you pick and choose what you like about my videos and you go with it i will say right now if you've been here more than twice please subscribe i'm not going to ask anybody to like like my videos or anything like that but if you could subscribe i am going to ask you to subscribe if you've been here more than twice subscribe you know obviously there was something that you liked good enough to to come back at least twice or the third time now so sub subscribe if you would please you know i really appreciate it and i really appreciate all the new subscribers i would have never thought that i'd even get close to 200 subs and uh we're just we're getting close to 200 subs and uh I'm cool with that, even if I don't get any more. Even if I don't get any more subs, I, it is nice having having people watch my videos. So if you don't want a sub, you don't have to, but I'd really appreciate if you would. I like that you've been here more than twice. Subscribe, please. <laughs> All right, let's get into another snake, because you see this guy is... <laughs> I've worked on these guys big time, as you can see, and I didn't really have to work. It wasn't work at all. And I don't have no problem up around my face, and, and he don't either. I mean, you know. Something that you can do for your boas. See my girl right here? The Vixen. I built a, a tree, a tree stand, a tree perch for snakes. She's been out hanging out while I've been uh, showing the bows off. I mean, showing the uh, ball pythons off. And she's just sitting there, hanging out. I really like that tree. I really like that tree. All right, we'll go with another one that is for sale. Lieutenant Dan, I don't know if I want to sell him, but I probably will if somebody really wants him. He's a sweetheart, too. He's a sweet snake. He's another clown, 66% heptopied. This is Lieutenant Dan. he is a good boy all my all my snakes are good I don't have a bad one I don't and it's not just me you know because I like all of them when I say I don't have a bitey hissy you know attitude snake I really don't out of all these you know out of all my snakes that I got I don't have a bad one I don't have not one ass hat in this whole this whole plot, this whole collection. And I think it's because I treat them just, just for what they are. They're pets. They're not, you know, they're not something for me to make money off. These are my pets. And 
I love my animals. And that's why I get triggered if anybody anybody comes at me about my animals. I'm, uh, it, I get triggered. I'm gonna, my New Year's resolution is gonna be try to keep any negativity out of my videos. <laughs> I'm gonna try to be better. Because I, I understand there's enough drama in the world without creating any more. So I'm really going to try to to be low-keyed, not get excited. You'll notice if, I get, if I'm excited about anything, my, I get loud. And I, I can be excited, happy, excited. I can be mad, excited. And um, I get loud. I get really loud when I'm out having a good time with my friends I get really loud too <laughs> but I'm gonna try to do better I just I just hope everybody realizes that I really honestly try to do what's best for my snakes and the, what I'm doing for my snakes isn't because it's best for me. It's because it works best for my snakes. You know, we have to do what we what we have to do in order to have some have some of these animals in the places that we live. You know, and where I live, the way I keep my snakes, it works best for my snakes. Like I said, everything is on point. I have full sheds. They eat. They eat no problem. I don't have food strikes. You can see the temperament on my snakes is amazing. I mean, honestly, I, I couldn't be happier. And those are the things, you know, that tell me that I'm doing okay. I might not be doing perfect, but I'm doing well enough to where they're eating, they get full sheds. Um, the temperament. You know, is amazing on these guys. It really is. I gotta get him in the light, and I gotta get him out of my shirt. <laughs> Come on, bud. Jeez. <laughs> you get out of my shirt. Oh, he's locked right up. Oh, buddy. And you can't pull. You don't want to pull hard. Just. I just give like a constant steady pull on them, not hard, cause you will hurt them. So I just kind of give them a steady tug, you know, kind of pull. And when you feel them release a little bit, you pull some more. It's kind of like fishing. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it is, cause if you pull too hard when you're fishing, you'll break the fish off break your line so it's kind of the same way but in this case you could hurt your snake but this is kind of what i do and I, like i said in the very beginning if you've got a, a a running around crazy snake you know that's you know that you can tell is not real happy and fond of being out just sit and relax don't move around with it you know I mean, I still, I, I, so anyway, Lieutenant Dan is, is up for sale. And as you can see, he's a good boy. You know, difference between males and females is females can get a little bit bigger than males. Males tend to get two and a half, three feet long, average. Um, females can get, you know, anywhere from four to, you know, five, four, four foot, five foot, I guess, is average. Yes, they do. Some do get bigger. You know, this is peanut. Peanut is not for sale. Peanut. I see peanut. There's peanut. And I'll reach right in. Pick peanut up. Put this tub back. I had to pull the tub all the way out so I could show you. 
Let me see what she's doing. She's getting ready to go in the shed. Her belly's all pink. That's why she didn't come right to me when I opened. When... Normally, if I'm standing anywhere near this rack, Peanut's always the first one to come right out. She likes to come right out and be held. There we go. And she's a sweetheart. Been a sweetheart from, from get-go. I did have to assist feed this one to get her started. But I only had to give assist feed that one meal. And uh, frozen pinky, fuzzy, I guess. A pinky or a fuzzy was her first meal. But she's she is a good girl. She is beautiful. She kind of almost has that desert ghost pattern. But it's you can tell it's not. She's got a real dirty. That's that pinstripe marking, that dirty down her back. Looks really dirty in through here. Almost like she needs to take a bath. But it's just the pinstripe. That's the pinstripe in her. That's why she got a dirty forehead, a dirty head. See it? She's a pretty girl. She got blue eyes or green eyes. I think they're green. It's hard to tell, but they're either green or blue. But this is Peanut. As you can see, I could do whatever with Peanut. You know, I could go, I could go outside, get the mail, do all that. You know, she'd be fine. She does get fed every week. I don't feed her every two weeks she gets fed every every Monday this girl gets fed until she gets to wean rats and she's far from wean rats so but that's peanut And she's a good little girl. I'll take Vixen out. This is my Enchi Albino Clown. And she's so pretty. She is. Here's her head right to you. See her head? Ah, uh, it's actually fantastic. Looks fantastic from what I'm seeing. But she is a NG albino clown that I produced. She is up for sale, but I really don't want to sell her. So don't let anybody buy her. I got a price tag on her that says I don't want to buy her, so somebody would really have to love her more than me to buy her, but I really don't want her going anywhere. She is fantastic. Let's see if we can show everybody uh, those pretty eyes. Those pretty eyes. Uh, She's such a good girl. Not defensive at all. Albino. No. I heard the same thing. They're not bitey at all. She's a great eater. All my albinos eat great. You know, my pies eat great. I mean, she gets fed every two weeks. This girl is on live. She will not. I, I have not swapped her over yet. Yeah, you get to a point where you almost got to just force them over. And I don't, I have a hard time doing that. You know, after she hasn't eaten in a couple of weeks, I go and grab live for her again. And it doesn't hurt her. I could, if, if I just go and, you know, get her good and hungry, she will, she will swap. I just have a hard time doing that to a, to any snake. So 
all the other ones I got lucky and they swapped over after a couple of weeks of them not, you know, them not getting offered live off from, you know, Frozen Thawed a couple of weeks later, they, they took to it. But for some reason, she, this girl right here, does not want to swap from live. And I do not like feeding live. I don't like hearing the mouse or rat struggle. No. I don't like the thought of my snake possibly getting, you know, chewed up. You know, or injured by the, by the, I had to push, pull him out a little bit. That's why he did that. I had to pull him out. He was too far in the back. This is Apollo. Apollo is not for sale. Apollo is an Enchi clown. 100% hep for albino. This is Vixen's brother. The one I just had out. This is her brother, and he is not for sale. Unless somebody loves him more than me, and I don't think that will ever happen. So, he'll be here with us, and he's got gray eyes. He's got awesome eyes. I hope they pick up. And he's got a great attitude, too. He's got a great attitude, too. see no no reaction whatsoever you know for me doing this Aurora what Aurora doing just sitting there just hanging out she ain't even moving for all I know she could be sleeping that's how comfortable mine are my snakes are when they're out no, they they are not worried in the least about anything and once you get your snake you know feeling like that there, it, there's nothing you can't do you can do dishes you can fold laundry you know throw them around your neck do dishes do laundry I mean honestly there is there's not a whole lot you can't do once you get your snake used to you and once you're comfortable you know it, it really is you know there's a lot out there that you can do you, you know I, I've said it before you know you got a nice quiet park that's close to home there's absolutely no reason during the summertime you can't go and take your snake to the park with you you know it all depends on how your snake is. If your snake is, is like any of these that I've had out, there's absolutely no reason why you can't leave your house with them, you know, and, and start doing some stuff. The more that you can, you know, see no reaction whatsoever when I touch them because they're just so used to it, you know. So I, I definitely, you know say pet your snakes you know open their enclosures up pet them give them some pets even if you don't plan on taking them out you know get them used to that you know get that connection you know that's making a connection with them and uh if you if you do the if these few little things eventually you'll be able to do whatever you want with them and it will never ever be an issue you know, I'm going to stop telling people how chill my snakes are and I'm just going to let my snakes prove that because I know people are probably sick of hearing it all the time but I just saw a couple of videos this weekend that you know people with what they call defensive ball pythons and and I yes I know that they're out there but I just can't imagine it it's weird it's weird for me to even think of of a ball python even being like that anymore because I don't have any that are like that and for the most part none of them are like that from the get go you know I Brian the feisty that came from Brian Bachak was the only one Cleo eats this week and Cleo's up moving around so you know what we're gonna put Apollo back and I'm gonna take Cleo out 
And I'll show you how Cleo and most of these guys, a lot of these guys, all come out just the same way that she's going to come out. I got to move this chair over because I want everybody to see her up here moving around. I want to be able to see what she does. She eats this week, so that's why she's kind of roaming. And actually, I think she eats Saturday. You eat Saturday, huh, girl? You eat Saturday? Huh? You feel like eating Saturday? Yeah. Hi, girl. <laughs> I'm not... I'm not worried. I was so scared about scared of her in the very beginning when we first got her because she was a big snake. I hadn't had any snakes this size. You know what I mean? And I was just like, ugh. I was so worried. And as you see, there's absolutely nothing to worry about with her. She is such an amazing girl. She's just a normal, but she's amazing. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. And she's got such a good temperament. She, she, her temperament is just as, as awesome as she is. I mean, all right, we're gonna move this thing back. Way, way back here. Yeah. So I can back up. She is 10 years old. Oh, Aurora decided to come out. Oh, no, you ain't getting to those rats. You ain't getting to those rats. We'll come back here, girl. We'll come back here, girl. Oh, here she comes. But she's, she is probably 25, I think. I think she was 25, 26 grams last time we weighed her. She eats every three to four weeks. A large rat. And she is such a sweetheart. I couldn't imagine. And she's been like this since we got her. You know, the, the people the, the people that I got her from obviously had done right by her because she when she came here, she she was just a sweetheart to everyone. My four-year-old granddaughter holds her, was here. That's the other thing. My four-year-old granddaughter, first thing she did when she come over here Christmas Eve, is she goes, Grampy, can I go see some snakes? That was first thing. She hadn't even took her coat off yet. And my four-year-old granddaughter, here, check this out. Somebody wants to come to Dad. Oh, now she decides she doesn't want to, yeah. But see, it's never, she doesn't bite. It, they, you know, if you saw that, she just, she just turned and went the other way. Watch why I touch her. You, she's not fraying it because she's used to my touch. That's, that's all I, the reason I pat my snakes. And I know there are people out there thought that I was nuts, but you see, that's why I do it. Just like this. No reaction whatsoever from her, from any of my snakes when I touch them, whether they're in their tub or whether they're in my arms. And and I and I go and pat them like that, I get absolutely no reaction whatsoever. You know. But see how she's not really trying to get away. She's just kind of moving because she could. She would be trying to back down. The snakes will go backwards and back down down your body and she used to do it all the time and now she just she's just kind of hanging out kind of walk, moving around not really having a care you know, throw her up around my neck no care she really don't she's a good girl this this girl my wife does dishes this is this girl you know she do anything with 
I mean, literally, I almost think she could probably go and clean her car out and vacuum her car out with her. She, this girl just does not care. She likes being out. I mean, most of my snakes all like being out. But this girl, you know, movement, moving around real fast, doesn't do anything to her. She don't care. You know. But I will say where she came from her last owners you know being that little girl and her mother she she definitely takes more to the wife than she does me but as you can see she's still a beautiful pretty little girl she's a pretty little girl but, all right we'll put her back and she's got just a just a water bowl water bowl on paper towel And uh, eats amazing now. All right, let's get a roar. We'll take a roar. We'll get a roar down from here. See ya. Well, I'm just gonna go right in. Just gonna go right in. And this girl really does not care. She's not even gonna fight me. You watch. Oh, maybe she's gonna fight me a little bit. <laughs> Let's see about getting her out of here. Unwrap her tail, yeah. You wanna be real easy, and you don't wanna be real forceful, kinda just tickle her, you know what I mean? Kinda, kinda tickle their tail, re release. Cause you don't really wanna force them because you can hurt them really easy. So, I just kinda, Trying to tickle her off. Oh, she's gonna wrap right back up again. <laughs> what are you doing, girl? Come on. Come on. What are you doing? Let's see. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She got my hands locked on either side. There we go. <laughs> she had my hands locked on either side of that tree. I wasn't even going to be able to get my hands off. Oh. There. You saw that? Messing with her? You know, granted, I'm sure that wasn't, you know, the, the you know her most favorite thing. But you saw her. it didn't turn into nothing. It didn't turn into her being defensive. It didn't turn into her doing anything. She didn't hiss. She didn't, she really didn't even really try to fight that bad. You know what I mean? She didn't really fight at all. And uh, look at her iridescence. You should see her in the sunlight. She is just incredible. She is incredible in the sunlight. And she just wanted to be out, so I put her on the perch. This tree perch works awesome. Just made it out of some wood outside. Excuse me. Just made it out of some wood outside. So anyway, I guess we shot this video. <laughs> uh... But there's a few things to do. What I did, you know, in the very beginning when I uh, got my got my snakes, I just kind of sit down and relax with them. In the very beginning, you don't want to move around a whole lot. The, the more you move around, the more you're going to, you know, put them off because it's just so much that they're trying to take in. It's a lot for their little brain to, to be, you know, trying to worry about all that stuff that's moving around so the best thing to do in the beginning is just kind of sit down hang out with them you know just just relax you know and uh eventually you'll get to where you can do whatever you want with them and the, you know I'm assuming, I mean, I can pretty much do whatever I want with mine. Even my shy snakes, if I give them 20 seconds, 
once 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 they're out and they realize oh it's cool it's a, it's the same old same old I, you know i'm getting i'm getting held and then i'm gonna get put back so i do love this girl i love all my snakes you know if anybody's wondering what my favorite snake is it's the one i'm holding at the time honestly because i bought all of these guys because it was something about them that i liked and i am still i still have that same feeling about all of them i am so glad and very feel very fortunate to have the snakes that i have and uh because i i got them for the right reasons i got into it for the right reasons i didn't get into it for money or anything like that i got into it just for the snakes and to have them for pets and and all that so i'm very happy with my choice but anyway with that being said i hope everybody has a good day i hope uh everybody hit the subscribe button um we'll get another video out here in another like two three days you know i'll try to give time for people to watch my last video before i put another video up it seems to work out better that way if I put too many out and I'm only getting like 50 views or something like that. So if I wait three, four days, I normally get, you know, over 100 views at least. So but anyway, I hope everybody has a great day and has a good week. And remember, if you can't be good, be good at it, people. Cheers.